So we've spent some time now with the uh, 2018 Nissan LEAF and I wanted to give you just some uh, quick information on my driving experience so far. Um, it's a very comfortable car to drive. We've been in and out of some rain and uh, sun today here in uh, the Gatineau area of Quebec. We've uh, left Ottawa, went for a drive, went on some tours. I'm very, very happy with the, the ride quality of this car. We actually took it through some very bumpy, uh, small side roads that were gravel even. And um, the fit and finish on these are brand new cars um, from Nissan factory. And th there's no squeaks, no rattles, nothing jarring around. That's from a workmanship or materials perspective. So I'm, I'm quite, uh, I was quite surprised actually a little bit because we went on some very jarring roads that I thought for sure I was going to hear a lot more noise than I have. This car is exceptionally quiet. In fact, Nissan has made it 30% quieter, quieter than the outgoing Leaf model. And it, it's targeted at, at that ni nice uh, sweet spot. It's got a 40 kilowatt hour battery, uh, which will give you up to 242 kilometer range, which is more than adequate for, for the majority of features that, a um, uh, majority of range that people need on a daily basis. Uh, we've, I've been driving exclusively with the e-pedal, um, I've touched the brake only a couple of times in a day and a half of driving. It, it really, um, it's very intuitive, uh, it works very well, and um, it doesn't take you long at all to, to get used to, um, to the e-pedal and the braking that it provides. It does turn on the, the rear lights when it hits a 0.2 G of a deceleration, and when, it, when you stop, it keeps those brake lights on. So it's a very um, nice experience. It's the, the, the i3, when I drove it, it was harder, and some of the others are different feels. This is a very comfortable feel, and that's what Nissan wants to give drivers with the uh, 2018 LEAF is that safe, secure, and comfortable feeling in driving an everyday use electric vehicle. It's a front wheel drive vehicle. Uh, the motor is the same as the outgoing LEAF, but it's got more power going to the motor, to the AC motor. So it gives you 110 kilowatts of power, which is up about 30% from the outgoing model. Now, obviously with higher output from the uh, inverter, that's a, it's a smaller inverter if I remember correctly but it provides more output and it's a liquid cool the inverter um, you get more horsepower so 147 um, horsepower rating and 236 foot-pounds of torque that's 176 newton meters for our, our metric uh, friends uh, that's up 20 percent 26 percent from the previous gen because of the new inverter and of course uh, like all EVs they harness a regenerative power for braking and for uh, putting energy back into the batteries now, Nissan's uh, strategy moving forward, especially from, uh, not just from electrification, but certainly from a uh, market perspective, is their three-pillar strategy, uh, which is made up of uh, Nissan Power, uh, Nissan Intelligent Power, Nissan Intelligent Driving, and Nissan Intelligent Integration. Now, when we bring that into the LEAF framework, the uh, Intelligent Power, obviously, as I mentioned, is with the uh, higher horsepower rating and torque rating from the, uh, from the uh, motor that puts out the higher output. Intelligent driving, of course, is much more tech in this car. So you've seen videos and seen things about uh, ProPilot. I mentioned the e-pedal the e there for a sec. Um, these are a lot more tech features in a car that's uh, in the subcompact play, uh, price um, and marketplace. Uh, there's a lot of value in this car. Of course, they have things like intelligent uh, lane departure, auto high beam assist, um, intelligent emergency braking, which of course is going to be a standard, I, I'm sure, in the next few years on everything. And that also it, it recognizes pedestrians and bicycles too, so some smaller objects. Um, it's got a rear backup camera and rear cross traffic alert. Nissan's improved the looks of the 2018 LEAF with an all new aerodynamic design that gives a 0.28 drag coefficient to slip through the air. In keeping with Nissan's design language, the 2018 Nissan LEAF also includes the V-Motion grille, the floating roofline, and the boomerang lamp signature taillights, along with enhanced brand symbols throughout the vehicle. I think Nissan's done a really good job of improving the looks and the design of the new 2018 LEAF. I mean, it is a real-use high-volume car uh, for them that's shipped around the world and still within the subcompact framework of being a real five-seater with a good-sized trunk. The curb weight is uh, at 3,468 pounds. That's about 110 pounds less than the outgoing LEAF. It's 1.4 inches longer and fractionally wider and taller than that previous generation as well. The wheelbase is at 106.3 inches and it runs front strut and rear torsion bar suspension. 
Now the body torsion stiffness has been increased by 15% and there's been a 5 millimeter change to the center of gravity due, I believe, to the larger battery pack. And with that Nissan Intelligent integration comes mobile phone support. So you can use your Apple CarPlay or Android uh, Auto uh, devices to connect and get all the functionality through your infotainment system, which is a 7-inch infotainment screen here in the Nissan LEAF. They also have an app, which is their Nissan eConnect app, which will allow you to do things like preheating, pre-cooling, checking the st uh, charge status of your battery, um, start charging, uh, stop charging, all kinds of different features, up to uh, premium features like uh, valet mode. If uh, you can set a speed limit, so if somebody's driving the car faster than you want, you'll get a message. Uh, if you lend, loan the LEAF to your kids and uh, you don't want them to go out to a certain geography area, out of a certain area, it will give you an email if they pass those boundaries and so forth. So there's a lot of different things you can do with the um, uh, app. Now, also within that uh, intelligent integration is the vehicle to grid technology of the V2G that Nissan claims. What that means is that you can use your LEAF in the, with a proper machine, uh, proper technology, to send power back to your house or to other objects, uh, street lamps, things like that. Uh, these are technologies that are being deployed in Japan already. They've sold thousands of these units. They're not coming to North America just yet, um, but we do anticipate that they will come in the future at some point. Don't know when and, and what kind of manner, but it's pretty cool. And that's one of the reasons that Nissan has stuck with the Chatamo fast charging standard is because it does give them bi-directional charging. And they did that for a reason because it supports the vehicle to grid technology. Now LEAF uh, stands for Leading Environmentally Friendly Affordable Family Car a lot of letters but that's what the the leaf stands for and originally came out and they designed the leaf to be a real use high volume mass more mass market attainable vehicle and it's certainly showing that self in the second generation leaf because they've they've come out with with a nicer package obviously nicer looks still uh, based on the uh, the older uh, gen 1 platform from a uh, size perspective but you know it's got more more appointments in the interior I think it's a little nicer interior certainly the looks they've streamlined uh, they've uh, standardized on the v-motion grill the boomerang tail lights uh, to keep it within that Nissan family and they and they still offer the Nissan Leaf at a very attractable price. They, in fact, the new 2018 Leaf is uh, just slightly under than the outgoing Leaf price from 2017. So it's pretty good uh, with the refresh that it gives you with a bigger battery and all the different features. And it is fun to drive. As I mentioned at the top, um, I've been driving the 2018 Leaf for about a day and a half now, really getting comfortable with it. Um, it's very comfortable to drive. Uh, all the controls are very easy. I mean, I know people say there's a lot of buttons. There's over 50 buttons in this vehicle for controls. Uh, but, you know, it's like anything. Once you learn uh, what the functionality, it becomes intuitive and second nature to you over time. So um, with any cars, I mean, Cadillacs and some of the other higher-end cars have even more buttons, and some have less, like, of course, the Tesla Model 3, which has one button only. Um, so it's really not a problem. I think once you once you drive the car like anything, you learn it, it'll be intuitive as far as how you get to certain screens in the menu and what buttons activate what features and what functions. Now acceleration in this car with the, with the more power going to the AC motor gives you 100, uh, 0 to 100 kilometer time in 7.9 seconds, which is about 15% quicker than the outgoing LEAF. The new LEAF also comes with active ride control. For more precise cornering, reducing vibration while simultaneously improving ride quality and steering control. Now the range at this 40 kilowatt hour battery will satisfy a large majority of users and if you're in that category of needing something to get you know 60 70 kilometers 40 miles a day or so in driving range with with some some longer trips planned uh, this car is more than capable of doing it. I wouldn't hesitate to take this car on a longer trip even if it surpasses two or three DC fast chargers. Um, I would you know I think most EVers when you get into that uh, battery electric only type of format vehicle you, the trip is your experience. So it's not necessarily just getting from point A to point B in the fastest method uh, that's available, but it's, in, it's experiencing the trip as well. And I find that the, you tend to slow down the pace a little bit when you're in an EV, and uh, that lowers your stress, and it makes you feel a little bit better driving. And I'm sure Tesla owners and everybody that's got an EV can attribute to that. Some, some like them for the performance and the handling, of course. Uh, some, they, they want the sports car type functions. Uh, but as a practical value-add car that the Nissan Leaf is, I think it hits all those buttons very well. 
Now, on the Pro Pilot Assist function, I tested that on some motorways. Um, it's not really recommended for, for you know, two-lane highway use. I did do it a little bit on that. It does work. Again, it's based on, cam uh, on a single camera system and a radar system up front. It sees what you can see. So if it's raining, it doesn't work very well. In fact, it doesn't work. It won't engage. Um, if it's uh, covered up, if it's uh, snowy and the roads, you can't see the lines, uh, it doesn't, doesn't really do much for you from that perspective. But uh, I drove it uh, the other uh, yesterday in nicer weather for a bit, and it worked very well. There's no boomer, there's no uh, ping ponging back and forth in the lane. Pro Pilot's very good at, at center keeping the lane, riding the turns as well. Some 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 very good um, curves that it can uh, navigate. Again, it's a driver assist, so you need to keep your hand on the wheel or at least engage with it when it comes up to remind you to to touch the wheel. Now within the car, assisting Pro Pilot is the front-facing camera above the. Um, uh, above the uh, rear view mirror. Of course, again, it's what you can see. It's a visual base system along with the front radar. That's what Pro Pilot uses. The car itself has five cameras. So you've got the front facing one, you've got two on the side, one on each side mirror, one on the front of the car for parking assistance, and one on the rear, of course, for parking assistance for when you're backing up to get your rear camera. These uh, In the SL trim, this is all these cameras, especially the side ones, give you a 360 view, as they call it. It maps in pretty nice, and I'm sure that you've seen uh, elements of that uh, in, in brochures and, and previous cars. ProPilot is rated as a level two autonomy for driver assist. And uh, of course it encompasses uh, three main uh, types of systems within the car, uh, steering assist, uh, lane keeping assist, and uh, of course adaptive or intelligent cruise control, ICC as they call it. Uh, it even has the ability to slow down on traffic and stop if you've had ProPilot engage. So if you're in the highway and you get into a stop and go situation, that happens a lot, we all know that. Uh, the car will actually slow down and stop, and if it's within three seconds, it'll start moving forward again. If not, then you just either press the ProPilot Pro button or tap the uh, accelerator pedal, and you'll start going again, all in ProPilot mode, so it won't disengage. Now, obviously, if it doesn't see lanes or some weather comes in or something, that's a different story. But well, in normal operating, it'll, it'll work very, very well. Now, e-pedal. E-pedal is a great, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's a great feature on this car. It took me literally a couple of minutes just to get the feel of it, and I've been pretty well driving 99% of the time just with e-pedal. Um, it combines regenerative and mechanical braking. Now, it's mainly regenerative braking. It does use the mechanical brakes uh, very little, and it primarily uses those for stopping, for full stopping and for holds. It'll hold on a 30% grade uh, up or down slope, and it engages the mechanical brakes for that. It doesn't add any additional wear to those, to those uh, friction brakes. Uh, so I, we were, I was asking some, uh, some people who are some LEAF owners uh, who came out to this event uh, yesterday about brake wear and they, the one guy just said he's got over 80,000 kilometers and he hasn't changed his brake pads yet on his, discs, uh, on his disc brakes. So uh, the LEAFs do very well from a low maintenance perspective. Now e-pedal uses regenerative braking to slowly, to smoothly um, slow you down and come to a stop. And again, the faster you are, the more you let off the pedal, the, the, the harder, the, the, the more G's will be thrown to stopping you. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, it activates the rear brake lights. Within the Nissan LEAF, there's six driving modes. You've got your D mode for your regular driving, gives you that coasting experience with very minimal regen. You've got your B mode, so when you let off, you've got more intense regenerative braking to help you brake. And you've got your uh, e-pedal, as, as I mentioned, which is something you can throttle back and forth, more intense, less intense. It's a very smooth transition, very smooth operation on the e-pedal. Of course, you can put the eco button on, and then that doubles the amount of driving modes to six. You can have an eco D, an eco B, and an eco e-pedal. What the eco mode does is it limits the amount of output the, uh, that the uh, inverter will, will give to the motor to drive, so you can uh, save a little battery and save some power. It'll, you have to press the pedal a little farther to get going a little faster, but it's great for if you want to conserve some energy and and uh, utilize that feature. One thing I like that Nissan's done with the 2018 LEAF is include a level two charger with the car. Uh, so it has an adapter or it has a plug at the end of it that's a 4-15P NEMA plug, which uh, will give you a 32 amp of service uh, from a level two capacity perspective. Uh, so if you don't have that plug, you can run a plug to your garage and just simply use this unit to level two charge your vehicle in about seven and a half hours from empty. Uh, most people, of course, don't take it right to zero when they charge it, so within you know, four to three to four hours on a normal setting and, and off peak times, you'll be able to recharge your leaf to full capacity. That's a nice little thing because if you don't feel like going out and getting a, a basic charger, if that's all you wanted, then it, the car comes with one. And that's standard in Canada. It's different in some of the other parts of the world, in the US and Europe, but in Canada, um, that uh, level two, uh, level one, level two SE, EVSE uh, is standard with all trim levels of the leaf.
Now on the subject of charging and batteries, the new battery design of the 2018 Nissan LEAF adds energy storage capacity without increasing the size. As I mentioned earlier, the battery pack occupies the exact same dimensions as that of the previous generation LEAF. The individual cell structure of the laminated lithium-ion battery cells have been improved, representing a 67% increase in energy density versus the original 2010 LEAF model. Now another key engineering improvement for the lithium-ion battery pack is the use of enhanced electrode materials with revised chemistry. And this results in a higher power density while contributing to greater battery durability upon charge and discharge. The increased battery pack in the 2018 Nissan LEAF provides a 151 miles of EPA rated range or 242 kilometers. Acceleration is brisk at 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.9 seconds, which is about 15% quicker than the previous model. The 2018 LEAF should satisfy the needs for the majority of typical owners, which only drive about 40 to 50 miles a day or 60 to 70 kilometers per day. For the North American market, Nissan offers the LEAF in three trim packages, the S, the SV, and the SL. All Nissan LEAFs include comprehensive warranties, which cover the battery for eight year, 160,000 kilometers or 100,000 miles. The base model S includes a 6.6 .6 kilowatt onboard charger, e-pedal, a level one, level two EVSC, Chatamo quick charge port, intelligent emergency braking, rear view monitor, heated front and rear seats, heated steering wheel and resistive battery heater, a heat pump, LED headlights and LED daytime running lights, Nissan's intelligent key and 16 inch alloy wheels. The mid-level SV trim priced at 39598 adds Nissan Connect navigation system with seven inch touchscreen, support for the EV telematics application, integration with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Sirius XM radio, ProPilot Assist, including intelligent cruise control and steering assist, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, and upgrade to 17 inch alloy wheels. And the third trim model of the 2018 Nissan LEAF is the SL model. That gets everything that I mentioned uh, before and it adds leather seating. It's got some suede Alcantara trim, which looks very nice. Um, it's got intelligent around view 360 camera, so you get those extra cameras so you can see uh, when you get close to a curb and, uh, and backing into parking spots, it's a really nice, cool feature to help you get into those areas. It's got the upgraded Bose a seven speaker um, uh, with subwoofer stereo system. Now, I know that uh, some people don't like having that subwoofer in the back and they can see it kind of protrudes in there. I don't really think it adds, uh, takes away anything from cargo capacity. It's got a pretty good uh, uh, hatch area there for, for and with a deep well for good cargo. It's 63 inches if you fold the back seats down to the back. Uh, we, you know, uh, here on the, our review, uh, and overviews we like to take a tape measure and I did that earlier so my, uh, my understanding is you can get a full bike in here without having to take a wheel off and lie it flat on there and uh, be able to move a bike around and also with the SL trim you get heated outside mirrors which again is great for our Canadian winters with integrated turn signals so so really nice packages on the SL now, to further help with pricing, especially here in Canada, we've got three provinces that offer rebates and incentives. We've got British Columbia, Quebec, and Ontario. British Columbia, you can get up to $5,000 for this uh, as an incentive for, for the LEAF. In Quebec, you get $8,000. In Ontario, we still have, knock on wood, and a whopping $14,000 rebate that's available on the LEAF. So when you factor that in, you can get in, in the, from a Canadian pricing perspective in Ontario, you can get into a 2018 SL Nissan LEAF. Uh, uh, which is a fully loaded trim package with tax in and your freight and PDI and all your other fees that are available that are added onto your bill when you buy a car, less your rebate for just around $35,000 Canadian. So that's a, that's a pretty attractive price point. We're still not 100% at cost parity to other uh, vehicles in this size class, but we're, we're much closer in that threshold. And uh, I think you get a lot of value for that price point. So what's my overall impression of the 2018 Nissan LEAF? Um, well, I like it. Obviously, you folks know that I've purchased one, so it's been great to be able to experience driving it for a couple of days before even getting my car, which is going to be probably June by the, by the looks of it now. Nissan's demand is just going through the roof. They are uh, way uh, overselling these cars <laughs> and not being able to keep up with production from a, both a North American and global standpoint. So uh, I can see why. 
Um, to summarize this car, it's got great fit and finish. It's got good features and value for the price. Um, as always, it's got that uh, EV smile, as we like to say, when you put your foot on the accelerator, you will go with the torque that this car has. It's got versatility with uh, fold down seats, um, with uh, the carrying capacity, uh, with all the driving tools and, and uh, features that it has. So it can handle a lot of needs. And I'm very, very uh, satisfied with the build quality of this car. That's really one thing that I wanted to, to experience is driving around rough areas and, and all throws in, in, in and out small streets and see what it performed like. It's performed admirably. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reviews on the internet. I encourage you to watch some more. I didn't want to go and, and do a too detailed review on this car. I kind of want to give you more of my impressions and my thoughts after driving it for a couple of days. Uh, I want to thank Nissan Canada, Canada for inviting uh, us uh, up to join them. Unfortunately, Trevor couldn't make this event, so uh, so I came for uh, for our show for the EV Revolution show. I want to thank them for their hospitality. It's been uh, we've had some some really great um, chances to network and talk to people in within the auto industry here in uh, Canada uh, about uh, their thoughts on the Nissan Leaf, and everybody's uh, got a pretty similar opinion that they're very impressed with the car and uh, what you get as a value for the price. Uh, and performance of this vehicle. So if you're on the edge and not sure from an EV perspective, um, if you're in, waiting for your Model 3 reservation and you want your Model 3, don't cancel your reservation. Uh, you do what you have to do for your needs. Um, but if you are in the market looking for an EV now, um, I would highly recommend the 2018 Nissan LEAF. Uh, it's got more than adequate range for most of your needs. It does have the capacity to go longer distances should you choose. You just have to follow the the, of course, recommended uh, charging and, and know that the charging will slow down after a few con few successive rapid chargers. If you're looking for long distance traveling and multiple rapid chargers every day, like three, four, five, you want to go, 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 you may not, you may think twice about the Nissan Leaf because you're, you'll be able to do it. It's just going to take you a lot longer than maybe some of the other EVs out there. But for a good all-purpose uh, family car or single person car or second car for the, for the uh, or primary car, Nissan Leaf, um, I would give this a 9 out of 10. I rate it really, really high. All right, I'm here with our favorite uh, Nissan Canada person, Francois Lafarve. If I pronounce that correct, I always <laughs> seem to muck it up. Now, we met Fra Francois at the uh, Canadian International Auto Show uh, this past February in Toronto, and he was nice enough to give us some information. So he's here at the Nissan event in Ottawa, where we're getting a, a nice big uh, press uh, invite uh, and look at the Nissan LEAF, and there will be more coming tomorrow. But I had a few questions, um, a little bit more high level from a Nissan perspective, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to kind of share share these with our viewers and get your responses. So, you know, we've talked about it on our shows that the Nissan was the first out of the gate, really, for a true mass market vehicle from a, a battery all electric perspective, for everyday use, especially not uh, non commercial use. Now, with the LEAF, Nissan has become the worldwide leader in battery electric vehicles with over 310,000 sold, and that includes. Uh, uh, the e, uh, NV200 when you lump that into the mix from a global perspective. Um, and this is slightly ahead of Tesla's. I mean, it's, we know it's Tesla's uh, cranking the Model 3's out now as we speak, so they'll catch up. And it's not really a, a, about numbers, but um, the leadership that Nissan has attained to date, what do you attribute that uh, success and leadership to? Uh, well, the big aspect of is history, right? You were talking uh, about we were the first one to, to bring out uh, an EV uh, mass market, and that was back in 2010. Um, and uh, really, we, we started in 19... In, in 1947, right? Yeah, so it's post -war. Uh, and post-war, exactly, uh, when gas was very, very scarce in uh, in Japan. I think that's where the Tama, if I got that right, exactly, the yeah. Tama. Uh, and this was the start, right? We didn't stop there afterwards uh, when gas uh, there was no uh, um, oil issues in, in right. Japan. Uh, Nissan continued, and uh, we had over 20 production units and prototype afterwards, uh, really to come up to uh, uh, the car that we mass produced, um, and. and Really, it's, a, it's about timing, right? Uh, at, in 2010, was the right timing globally to launch a mass market electric car. Uh, and we had the, the experience and history to, to, to be ready for that. So, and then that's one aspect. And the market needs to be ready for that as well. Uh, you know, we, we all know that the, the government is, is implicated and uh, charging infrastructure. There's a lot of aspect to it. So 2010 was the right uh, time. And obviously, to be, to be the first as well. So you don't want to wait too long as well. But uh, that, that timing was perfect. Absolutely. 
and um, this past ex uh, sorry and this past experience um, how has that influenced the future of Nissan's electrification strategy and uh, what what can we expect to see from that uh, and, and within what kind of time frames yeah um, uh, question comes at a perfect time because uh, usually it's difficult to comment on on future a uh, future plan uh, in, in a lot of details but what we can do is we launch our uh, midterm plan so uh, from fiscal year 18 to 22 last month so uh, late last month so it's quite fresh it's really good to uh, to be talking about this so first thing uh, that's relevant to, to EV specifically is the fact that we're planning to uh, to launch eight uh, fully electric vehicles uh, in that time frame uh, and then again that's globally uh, the second aspect to, of it is uh, to launch a global uh, crossover uh, vehicle uh, and the IMX is kind of the concept of that is that correct? No, exactly it's the inspiration the IMX is the inspiration for it uh, absolutely in terms of uh, uh, and again that's that's a new platform as well uh, that we're going to use um, <clears throat> and the third one uh, which uh, which is quite exci exciting as well is infinity will launch uh, electric battery electric vehicles as well in uh, fiscal year 21 so that's coming. So those, those are big news, uh, and uh, it, it just, again, proves that Nissan is there uh, and the alliance. So uh, Renault... Uh, I was going to ask about that. Uh, yeah, Renault, uh, Nissan, and Mitsubishi, are. Uh, we, we are working together and really developing the market uh, um, globally uh, on the EV side. <clears throat> And, and looking at every single market individually and say, well, what, what's the opportunity? Uh, so we're, we're there for the long run. This is not something that we're going to go away. We're just developing. Excellent, excellent. Um, now, obviously, with very strong current and projected um, global and national sale numbers, uh, the 2018 LEAF is, is evolutionary as opposed to revolution. It certainly is a step up and will certainly spur continued EV adoption uh, and market growth. Um, how do you see this growth from a Canadian perspective? Because a lot of reporting we see are U.S. and Europe and worldwide numbers. We don't really get a lot of independent numbers and uh, news on a Canadian front. And of course, Trevor and I are both Canadian doing this show. So I'd like to get your comments on what you see uh, from a uh, from an adoption perspective uh, from here in our neck of the woods. Well, if we look at the numbers, they're quite exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just looking at 2017. And again, um, a side note on that, in 2017, for six months, we were not able to sell the Nissan Leaf because we're in model year transition uh, between the, the Gen 1 and Gen 2. Uh, and, uh, and even with us sort of half, you know, in the picture, <laughs> um, there was a growth of 68% in BEV uh, in 2017. 120 percent in Ontario uh, and um, it, this is these are big numbers right uh, and at the end of the day for example Quebec uh, passed the two percent mark in terms of overall uh, BEV versus um, uh, the overall volume in Quebec uh, and I think the overall uh, volume in uh, in Canada passed that one percent mark so yes just by those last two comments uh, the, the, the numbers are small but they're growing extremely quickly so that's, that's, that's exciting for us, and that was 2017. And if you look at the growth right now, uh, we had our best month ever uh, last month with uh, 423 vehicles. Uh, the last best month ever for the LEAF was 179. So that's how the, the demand is there, the excitement is there, uh, and, and that's for uh, not only us, but the other VEs as, as well. So there's a lot of uh, uh, demand and growth, I think, for, for 18 and moving forward, because we see, we're going to see a lot more infrastructure being built uh, in, in provinces, and this will, again, push awareness. We're going to see a lot more cars as well uh, being, being launched. Um, so that's, that's, uh, all these factors will, will trigger gro growth, and right now we're right into it. Good numbers from Canadian perspective. I mean, uh, the last uh, March scorecard from Inside EVs, which is a site that we keep track of, I think reported about 1,500 uh, leaves, and that's just a U.S. Uh, card that they track. So knowing that around half of that, in addition to uh, uh, what they reported from U.S., is Canadian is, is an astounding feat, showing that we're growing up. Uh, finally, as part of a potential car buyer's hesitation to get into an all-electric vehicle, um, it's based on concerns of lack of fast charging, right? And we've talked about this a lot even on our show, uh, when needed for beyond vehicle driving range. Now, we know that more and more charging stations are being built every year around the world. Um, 
and uh, around the globe. Now, from a Canadian perspective, what's Nissan Canada doing to help grow the EV fast charging infrastructure? Are they doing anything? Yeah, well, last year what we did, uh, we uh, actually sponsored a project with Flow. Uh, in Ontario, uh, and uh, that was uh, 25 uh, fast charger in, in Ontario. And in the past as well, we were one of the, the first one uh, to, uh, we were the first one, sorry, uh, to uh, sponsor the uh, electric circuit in Quebec uh, by uh, installing 26 of them. Uh, and uh, again, we, we want to participate, and we did participate, but truly our focus is really on, 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 on the vehicle and vehicle sales and bringing cars to Canada. Uh, but yeah, in, in the past, uh, we've we sponsors, uh, sponsored these uh, projects, uh, but truly moving forward, uh, we see that there's, uh, there's so much momentum uh, that uh, there's 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 uh, a private sector, uh, a provincial government really getting involved, which is quite exciting. Excellent. Well, thank you. Yeah, we don't expect you to build your own supercharging network as an analogy, but uh, it's good to see that you are uh, participating in some of those programs and, and you know, pushing the government and uh, utilizing all the incentives. So, well, thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, answering these uh, high-level questions for me. Appreciate it. No, it's a pleasure. Anytime. All right, at the Nissan event, uh, I'm here with Owen Tunis. He's the uh, manager of ePowertrain Tech Affairs and Testing at Nissan USA based in Sacramento. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, welcome to Canada, and thanks for taking the time to come to, to meet with me and come to this event as well. Got a few questions a little bit more technical that I wanted to ask you, uh, Owen. Um, Firstly, um, with the current pricing, if we take a step back, with the current pricing model of the 2018 LEAF, uh, how would you summarize its value proposition as a competitive battery electric vehicle? Sure. So the idea in model year 18 LEAF is to carry on what we've done in the previous vehicle, which is really exactly focusing on that value proposition. So we start from listening with our existing customers and the things that were important to them and just giving them more at a similar price level. So we offer more range, more power, more feature, but the pricing is pretty, pretty stable. So relative to the other vehicles which are similarly priced, we're very competitive in terms of our range and output levels. Excellent. Now, uh, we understand, and we talk a lot about it on the show, that the new 40 kilowatt hour pack in the 2018 LEAF retains the same number of cells uh, as in the 30 kilowatt hour pack at 192 cells. The packaging has been made more efficient in the 40 kilowatt hour pack, but I, I have to say all that because I get, you know, uh, comments, <laughs> you didn't say it right, in the new pack uh, by providing eight cells per module uh, versus four cells per module as in the prior pack. This helps to maintain a similar physical size and footprint uh, as a prior pack uh, while aiding in increasing energy density. That's how you can get more. So can you provide any more information on what other changes to this new pack and drive system have been made in order to um, help increase energy density and power? Sure. Um, so again, starting from that existing platform where we started, uh, we don't want to impinge upon the cabin space. Right. So that's important for us to keep mm -hmm. that same footprint uh, within the vehicle, which is where we want to stay within that shape. Um, the, the items that you mentioned about the cells, there is still the same number of cells, but we have eight cells per module instead of four. Uh, but the cells themselves are a little bit thicker, about 0.9 millimeters thicker, which allows for more uh, material to store more energy. Uh, but it's also done with a chemistry change as well. So those two items put together is what allows for an increase in energy storage within the same physical size. Okay, great. Um, and can you explain why passive thermal management uh, methods, I mean, we get a lot of emails and a lot of comments and there's a lot of, you know, stuff out there about active thermal versus passive and Nissan seems to be kind of a little bit behind the, the ball on that. Um, but why passive uh, thermal management were maintained on the 2018 LEAF uh, when most other manufacturers are uh, deploying active uh, uh, cooling and, and heating techniques? Sure. Um, so, for example, we have about 300,000, more than 300,000 vehicles in the market at this point. So we have a fairly good uh, reference point in terms of how the cars are actually used and how customers are actually used and how much fast charging they do, the type of trip lengths they do. And with given the context of that, we're fairly comfortable with uh, having the passive cooling system. Um, it, the cells themselves um, keep a relatively uniform, they have very good thermal stability within the cell itself. So a passive cooling system is very effective uh, mechanism for that while maximizing the amount of available space, uh, stuffing it with batteries rather than other things, and importantly keeping the cost at a reasonable level because we wanted to strike that right balance of value for price, performance, um, and range. 
It's all about balance. I totally understand. Uh, what else would you say then on, on the topic of batteries to those concerned about doing long road trips uh, involving multiple fast charging? Obviously, some some information that's come up about successive uh, DC fast charging, um, and as well, do those people located in, in either more hot or more cold climates? Sure. Um, so the uh, as I said before, the majority of case of use is people don't use fast charging all that much. I think it's something like 99% use fast charging once or less per day. So we're talking about a relatively small portion of the driving that's done. Uh, we do have limits on the battery. So after multiple fast charges in a day, uh, we don't want the battery temperature to get too high. So we do dial back the current on the battery and that is intended to protect the battery for the long term. So that's as intended. Um, it's not unusual to dial back uh, current in that way. That's, uh, no, others do that as well. Um, as to using the car for a long distance trip, again, it's intended to be using for daily purposes. It can do those other drive cycles, but depending upon the conditions, it may not be as uh, convenient as perhaps another uh, you know, traditional vehicle might be. Um, and the climate, as far as the battery itself goes, um, from either hot or cold, the battery will take care of itself. It'll live within its own comfortable zone and will uh, we'll, uh, manage the battery temperature through vehicle controls. Okay, great. Well, it's pretty similar to a lot of information that we've been uh, saying to folks on the shows as well. But, you know, Nissan has targeted the LEAF at a, a fairly new element within the AEV community to uh, spur adoption, to give a very value-priced battery electric vehicle with a lot of features. So, obviously, you're going to come out with more model models. We talked to Francois a little earlier about some of the visioning that uh, Nissan's going after. So, uh, it's all good. So, thank you very much, Owen, for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks very much for your time. Appreciate it. Enjoy the car.